Well, it's safe to say that the original Valkyria Chronicles is probably one of my all-time favorite games. It's certainly in my top 10 and potentially could be in my top five. Uh, and the original PlayStation 3 version is one I spent a lot of time playing, completed and devoured. And I even bought the PlayStation 4 remaster of it when it came out last year, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, so when I heard that Valkyria Chronicles 4 was coming back to PlayStation after having two games on PSP, I was really, really pleased. Um, and even more so when I discovered the other day that a demo had been downloaded. And the demo is actually the first three missions of the game. So far I've put five hours into the demo, so there's lots and lots of content there. And your progress will carry over um, should you buy the whole game and you also get an accessory that you can add to one of your um, characters as well. So. What I want to do with this particular video is just to give some first impressions. I'll do a proper video when the uh, full game comes out at the end of September. But for now, just my thoughts on Valkyria Chronicles 4 compared to the original game, which, although it didn't sell a huge number of co copies, got uh, absolute critical acclaim. Um, so the things that really I really, really enjoyed about the original um, was the uh, turn-based uh, strategic combat. I love strategic role-playing games, and this was a mix of re real-time and turn-based combat. So it was, uh, um, there were other tactical elements to it. You had to manage real-time. The movement of your characters is done in real-time. You control it directly, and you can be intercepted by uh, enemy fire, uh, those kinds of things as you're moving. So there's a tactical element to the actual movement. And then once you're in position, you go into a battle mode where you will create an action, whether that is to shoot something, whether that is to heal yourself, um, revi uh, revive an ally, whatever it might be. So I love that. Also, the art style was gorgeous. They used a thing called the canvas engine, which gives this beautiful watercolor effect. Um, which was incredibly powerful and really affecting. And all the vibrant and beautiful colors that you've got was contrasting to the very serious things that the game was trying to ta talk about. Um, and that was the last thing that really I loved about the original is that it was a war game, yes, but it was a war game that really spoke instead about the effect war has on ordinary people. All of the main characters were conscripts, so they were teachers, they were bakers, they were gardeners, they were singers, you know, they, they all had a life outside of the military. Um, so there was a very relatable element to them all. Uh, and also it didn't shy away from difficult topics. So it dealt with racism, it dealt with ethnic cleansing, it dealt with, you know, the effect that war has on people. Um, the fact that large countries are quite happy to invade smaller countries because they have a resource that they need, uh, very prescient in this day and age. So it had that grittiness to it, but also, because it is a Japanese game, was slightly quirky and weird. The characters themselves were very characterful. You had a, um, a lancer who was obsessed with vegetables. You had a, a character who was happiest when she was running through grass and would say, happy grass, and she'd get a boost in her stats. My favourite character, Yarn, was a massive beefy lancer who was gay and in love with Largo and got a stat boost when he was positioned near other men. I mean, it had this lovely quirkiness to it. So the whole package was brilliant combat, a really affecting detailed story, but also lovely, relatable, quirky characters that had personality, even if they were just a grunt that you're using on the battlefield. So impressions of Valkyria Chronicle 4 compared to that are thus. Firstly, combat pretty much ad identical. You start on an open map like this one, and then you click on a character and you go into a real-time thing where you have to then move them, position them, and, and work them out. So combat has not changed uh, particularly at all. Um, you have now equipable accessories, which go to individuals, which you didn't have in the first game, and you have an additional class. So the class is a scout, shock trooper, lancer, engineer, and sniper. And in this console version, you've now got the Grenadier. And the Grenadier is a, a portable mortar, which adds a very different tactical element to the game. And I'll come to that in a second. Um, so here we go. You've got a real-time section where you're physically moving the character. The yellow bar is their um, AP. When that runs out, they can't move any further. So this guy is a scout. He's got a lot of um, distance. But if you can see, I keep seeing these foo numbers as he was running. That is the enemy grenadier. Now this is the thing about the grenadier. It's got a massive long-range attack, but also 
if an enemy unit is moving, provided it is in the uh, line of sight of, of an ally, so let's provided one of my characters can see it, the grenadier can lay down explosive suppressing fire as they move. Um, that's what you were seeing just now. I think you'll see it when I move this sniper in a minute. You'll see a foo come up and there'll be an explosion, perhaps not on this particular round, um, which makes a, an additional tactical element to it, but also makes it a bit OP. So although I'm quite intrigued by the tactical use of the, um, the grenadier, I'm not necessarily, I'm a bit worried about that it might just be annoying and overpowered. But that's something that we'll see once we're further into the gameplay on the, on the full game. But there is only an, one additional class. All the classes are upgraded in the same way. You earn XP and you go to a command center and you level up classes as a whole. So you level up the scout class and all of the scouts get a buff. Um, leveling up weapons is the same. You spend money to level up weapons and once you've leveled up a weapon, it equips all of the uh, all of the scouts or all of the um, the shock troopers uh, you can then if you win particular weapons uh, equip individuals so that's there to be honest with you the core gameplay is absolutely identical with a few tweaks and the tweaks are the accessories which will give certain units buffs and help uh, also there is um, an ability I didn't get to use it very much in the demo um, but individual units can get a morale boost, which gives them an accuracy, defense, and attack bonus that you can use. Um, also, it seems that you can get changes in objective halfway through um, maps. So in the original game, it was very much, here's the enemy camp, capture it. And every single mission was pretty much that. And it was the environments and the tactical elements that provided variety. And two of the three um, battles that you get in the demo, halfway through you get a change in orders which changes the outcome or your, you know, your completion outcome of the level. Um, and that was quite interesting as much as there seems to be a slightly more organic nature to the battles. Um, one of the weird things about that is the second your orders change, no matter where your troops are on the battlefield, they're all suddenly magically teleported to a new place to start again, which was a bit immersion breaking but not a big deal. Um, so impressions so far are very, very positive in terms of gameplay. You're basically getting exactly the same game as you got with Valkyria Chronicles 3, which is not a bad thing because it was pretty fabulous anyway, um, with minor tweaks, an additional class, and a couple of other things that might be happening on the battlefield. Obviously, more things may come in as far as you know the, the full game is concerned as you move through. So that's identical. Um, it looks gorgeous. The voice acting that I've seen so far is pretty good. And certainly in terms of the gritty nature of the storyline, um, the very last thing that happens in the demo, I'm not going to put any spoilers out there, does hark back to some of the more serious and unpleasant elements of the original game. And atrocity is committed by your, um, you know, by the antagonists. And it, it's kind of, it, it made me happy that this game was not going to be light and fluffy. It was going to keep that, um, that gritty grounded element that you got in the original. The thing that I am concerned about currently, and the only thing, and this is the only thing, otherwise I have five hours I'll put into this demo and it's brilliant, is that the characters have not grabbed me yet. In the original game, the characters, I loved them. They had that quirkiness to them. They had that um, relatability. Now the characters here are very relatable, but what hasn't happened yet is a kind of standout quirkiness for them. You know, like Jan, like the young lady who had a happy grass. You know, you, although they have character, although they are, um, you know, they're very individual, you can identify them easily on the battlefield, they are not, they haven't got that, that mad Japanese-ness that you get. And that's a weird, but you know, the Japanese games are often a little bit mental. In the original game, you had all these characters that had a winged pig called Yarn, um, you know, had obsession with vegetables. It was that, that lovely quirkiness that kind of made it a bit mad, as well as having this, this gritty reality, and also made the characters that you were playing, even if it was just, the, you know, the foot soldiers, fun, relatable, and engaging. So far, I haven't come across that. They've all been a little bit bland, a little bit ordinary. We haven't had that slightly mad, quirky, um, insane feel to any of the characters. The core characters interact with each other very nicely. The four main characters that I've come across seem to have a good dynamic, I get that. But no one has absolutely 
grab me in the way that the main characters and the incidental characters did in the original game. So I'm, I'm interested to see how that develops. Is this going to stop me buying the game? No, there you go. That's an example of the Grenadier intercepting the Lancer there and blew him up. Um, is it going to stop me buying the game? No, it isn't. The core go the gameplay loop is absolutely phenomenal and I love it. And you now the story so far is the kind of thing I'm expecting. I want that, that grittiness to the story, absolutely. What I'm missing so far is just that slight level of weirdness um, that lifted the original game into something quite different in terms of your engagement with character. Um, however, happy so far. I'm loving it. Um, I'll probably go back and do some skirmishes. This, by the way, that you're looking at the moment is a bonus mission that you get for completing the demo. So no spoilers here. This isn't anything to do with the story anyway. Um, if you enjoyed the original, you're probably going to enjoy this. If you like strategy role-playing games, uh, you're going to enjoy this. Um, if you want high-octane action with crew cuts, um, uh, m um, marines who run around spraying bullets all over the place this is probably not the game for you because that's not the way it works at all um, but check out the demo I've done five hours of the demo and you'll get a real sense of what the game is about so Valkyria Chronicles 4 so far very happy very happy definitely going to be picking it up on the 25th of September a um, couple of reservations the Gr uh, Grenadier might be a little bit OP concerned about that but not overly and also I just want a little bit more character in my characters that's missing for me a tiny bit at the moment but otherwise great loving it can't wait to get my teeth on the full game um, and hopefully you will too after watching this so if you've liked the video give it a like if you think someone else will like it give it a share and uh, if you want to subscribe for more of my content the button will be up on the screen somewhere right now thanks for watching and have a fabulous gaming week bye bye for now